Hello, I'm William Henley. And I'm William Quinn from another location, but I'm here. William, how you doing today? I am pretty good. Um, as you guys may notice, this is not our normal setup. There is a hot topic uh, out that we wanted to talk about. So this isn't going to be a regular Paula's video. This is just going to be us chatting about a um, hot topic. Uh, there's two hot topics right now. Uh, let's start off with the easier one. I say easier one because neither one of them is easy. Uh, the quicker one, um, and you may have saw this in the news, but um, uh, last week um, a pastor at Hillsong Church, um, uh, and I want to make this clear, it wasn't the main Hillsong campus. And I don't think this was even a campus pastor. I think this was like a youth pastor at one of the campuses in Canada on his personal Instagram posted 10 reasons why you should let your kids trigger treat and the media picked it up and went crazy with it saying um, Hillsong Church pastor saying to let your kids trigger treat and so I definitely have some thoughts on this but um, uh, uh, William you have any thoughts on this that you want to talk about? Well, here's the thing. Let me just I, um, nothing like really theological or anything, but let me just say from personal experience. Um, when I was a kid, I did participate in Halloween. So, you know, I did the dress up thing. You know, I dressed up my favorite cartoon character, or you know, you know, goofy Halloween character and that such. You know, I was a kid. You know, yeah, I didn't. You know, just just the fun thing. You know, um, when I got older. And especially when, when I got saved, the first few years thereafter, you know, I started looking into the origins, the quote, origins of Halloween. And um, unfortunately, they're not, they're very extremely pagan. And, um, you know, just um, over the years, as I've matured my Christian faith, um, unfortunately, I mean, honestly, it's now, it's now one of my least favorite holidays. I'm just being dead honest with you on that. Now, of course, if we're going to go down the pagan roots, we also have to address the fact that um, Christmas um, is a pagan holiday. Um, it is a winter solstice, right. um, and uh, the Christians took it and tried to uh, add religious meaning to it and stuff. But um, uh, right. I think the point that I want to get at this is, um, first of all, we need to make clear this was not Hillsong Church making a statement. Um, this was not Brian right. Houston making a statement. Um, this wasn't even this guy making the statement as a pastor. This was his personal Instagram account. And he has since deleted yeah. the uh, feed. And um, I think he even took his account private. Um, now, was, um, was this a... Um, well, this is like a... Um, like a um, Instagram blog he did. He didn't do anything like a tape or anything, like a like a video he did. Or just like a blog, just some words he yeah, typed it's just in. Like that's a, it. You know, like a, a screenshot of some stuff that he oh. typed in. You know, ten reasons you should let your kids. Now, um, I actually haven't had a chance to see it because he's removed it. Um, but uh, uh, here's the thing. Yes, there are some. Uh, um, there there is pagan holiday, uh, but think, you know, there's plenty of churches that do fall festivals that, you know, kids can come in in their right. costumes and dress up and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take them to a mall. You know, and I think what he's saying is, you know, don't let your, don't get all into like stuff like the demons and ghosts and stuff like that. You know, police your kids' costumes and take them to someplace safe and, you know, let them have a bit of fun. Right. And um, let's not mm -hmm. get all into, you know, the demonic and stuff like that. And I think that's what the pastor was getting at. Right. So, um, but... Yeah, um, as far as the, the pagan thing goes, you know, I understand, you know, Christmas being, has pagan roots, I mean. Um, but I don't think... I'm just speaking of Christmas, I'm no... Um, for, for, for Christmas and, and Halloween, I know are, are going two opposite directions right. as far as going pagan goes. As far as you know, what we believe in the Christian faith is, 
I um oh, let me be honest with this. I have friends of the Christian faith that do not celebrate Christmas. And I'm hundred percent cool with that. I respect their decision. Um I'm completely understandable how they feel understand how they feel about that, and I completely respect their decision. I'm cool with that. And you know, I tell them how they I, I feel. I mean I, I don't mind celebrating Christmas and they're cool with that too. So, you know, I have friends you know, that choose not to. I'm completely fine with that. They'll barbecue on Christmas Day instead of eating turkey or ham. That's yeah. fine, pretty much. You know, I got friends from Russia. You know, they celebrate Christmas on January 7th, um, I believe. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think I think my whole point is, is that, you know, we're crucifying, um, well, not just a person, but an entire church based on, like, some obscure pastor uh, posted right. to his personal blog. It wasn't even up to, to the <coughs> church's web page or anything like that. So, um, right. so I'm just gonna say on that, you know, guys, back off. You know? um, yeah. And so, okay, that's the easy story. Um, now, uh, Quinn, you posted a blog last week um, about an extremely hot topic, uh, mm-hmm. and l- let me have you uh, introduce, um, w- you know what, let's, because everyone's going to know what these names by now, so let's go ahead and throw out the names, if you don't mind, so if you'll give a bit of background. Oh, yeah, uh, basically... Um the pastor that questioned the famous pastor's name is John MacArthur, and uh, the the person he questioned was Beth Moore, who's a prominent pastor you see on TV a lot, and and you know I think she's been on James Robinson a bunch, and John MacArthur of course is the uh, um, the quote fundamental pastors in California, and um, the, and I'll just throw those names out there for you and pretty much. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. yeah. I, I was actually trying to pull something up. Um. Okay, okay. Um, well, basically, uh, what happened was he was at his, like, his, quote, 50th anniversary conference, and uh, one of the um, panelists uh, decided to do a little word association with John MacArthur, and uh, the first pe- person he brought up was Beth Moore, and then you heard a little bit of a snickering in the crowd, and then um, John MacArthur uh, gave two words, which was "go home." And and then it was like all of a sudden all this laughter and applause, pretty much from the crowd. And you know, just and then he gave a little short answer of why he said that. You know, which he thinks is like some theological great answer. But oh well, I'll just I'll just leave it there, pretty much. Right. Right. Um, and I am trying to. Uh I am signed in under the wrong account. Okay. You know what? I'm not... Okay. okay. Um, guys, uh... So, okay, so I was going to pull up um, the uh, uh, the tweets and the in- Instagram and stuff, but uh, I'm not set up for that. But you know what? Um, if you'll go to either our Facebook page or, or Instagram page, um, you can uh, actually see these. Uh, uh, I, I don't have a... Uh, is it? It's John McDowell, right? Yeah. His? Uh, is it? No, no, no. Uh, the guy's name. Uh, the guy's uh, name. Uh, John, John MacArthur. John MacArthur. Yeah, John Let me MacArthur. see if I can find okay, it. Hold. McDowell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, John MacArthur. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, but yeah, I'm not a. Uh, I do have Beth Moore's response um uh, screenshotted. Um, which I which was awesome. Which yeah. I thought was awesome, by uh, the way. Beth Moore uh, responded, and like I said, you can go see this. Um, I've retweeted it to Twitter. I've screenshotted it on Instagram and screenshotted it on Facebook uh, on um, our page. But she responded, when I was called into the ministry at the age of 18, I responded to God, Mm -hmm. not a man. And she said, it didn't even occur to me to say no. And then in a follow-up tweet, she said, if you don't want to follow me, don't follow me. I'm not forcing you. And um, I thought oh, it was a perfect yeah. answer. I thought it was a perfect yeah. answer. You know, 
And she didn't have to say Mr. MacArthur's name directly. And you know, I thought I thought you know that made him more better. I think um, you know just basically just saying from the heart what she was called to do, and really that to the rest of us, and just following God instead of man. That's perfect. She doesn't need to mention yeah. anybody else. You know. And I know Joyce Meyer and Christine Kane. Uh, while they didn't uh, address it directly and didn't throw out names, they definitely addressed the topic over the past weekend. Um, yeah. Both of them had uh, great answers, um, and uh, yeah, uh, guys, uh, if you if you want to see their responses, uh, I mean, they're public. Go see them on um, uh, on um, Twitter. Uh, but uh, I thought maybe we should talk briefly about what the controversy is and uh, why people are so torn on this, um, and it. All stems back from for, to First Timothy two, uh, verses eleven through fifteen, and it says, um, yep. "A woman should learn in silence with full submission. I do not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. Instead, she is to be silent. <laughs> for Adam was created first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and transgressed." But she will be saved through childbearing if she continues in faith, love, and holiness with good judgment. Um, and so, you know, for years I was kind of um, in this crowd. You know, women are not allowed to uh, preach and stuff. Um, I've, I've I shifted on this. Yeah. And um, I think you have too over the years, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'll just gonna explain, you know, my, my background. You know, I did go before I went to Gateway. I was at a, uh, I was at a fundamental, uh, kind of a fundamentalist church. Not, ex- I wouldn't say really extreme fundamentalist like that, but it was like leaning that direction, good way, but not like all the way. Uh, but they did held held that viewpoint that you know women are supposed to stay st- uh, women are supposed to stay silent in the church. Um, when I first got to Gateway and when I first uh, went to Christ for the Nations, um, when I, when, you know, sometimes when speakers came up, you know, I was a little bit shell-shocked because of my background. And, you know, there were times I walked out, you know, maybe out of fear, uh, maybe out of uh, just, uh, maybe just pure spiritual blindness, maybe out of, you know, just... Um, uneducated with the other type of Christianity, if you know what I mean, pretty much. Yeah, uh, and I was kind of the uh, same way. It's like, you know, uh, at first I was thinking, you know, even if I don't agree with it, this is what the Bible says. And Mm -hmm. it's like, am I going to sit here and trust what the Bible says, or uh, am I going to be politically correct on everything? And so think uh, I want to I, I kind of went to this with a more theological uh, perspective um, mm-hmm. and so a couple of things you, uh, we need to realize first of all um, we need to discuss um, oh I actually wrote uh, wrapped it up really good here okay um, uh, okay um we need to ask um, who is Paul speaking to? What is the wording he mm-hmm. used? And who is Paul? Um, and so let's wrap up. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, wrap up, wrap up. Okay, so let's start with. Um, and this is, guys, why we normally edit videos. Um, but. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. Um, Let's start off with who Paul is speaking to. This was, uh, Paul, most of his letters are written to churches. Um, You have, he wrote four letters to the uh, church in Corinth, which we have two of them. Um, He wrote um, Mm -hmm. letters to the church in Galatia, uh, uh, Ephesus, uh, 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 Thessalonica, uh, and uh, Philippi and Colossia. 
I'm sure there's probably one I'm leaving out. Uh, Rome, Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Romans. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so the thing is, is these were churches that Paul planted. Mm-hmm. Paul was a church planner and a, um, a missionary, and he was a great theologian. Um, right. He was not the only one planting churches. We need to remember that. Um, and he did not speak for the entire church. He was a member of the council. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, Peter and James were pretty much the head of the church um, at this time. Um, and, uh, but specifically, First Timothy is not written to a church. It is written to an individual, uh, Timothy, who... I guess you could call him, uh, the title didn't exist at the time, but he was technically bishop over the churches in uh, Ephesus. So, um, so there is, and the funny thing is, is Paul doesn't mention this in any of his other letters. Um, and in fact, we can actually see, um, uh, especially in the book of First and Second Corinthians, and um, in the book mm-hmm. of Acts, women were very much involved in the ministry. Um, uh, we can go back to uh, the Old Testament. Uh, one of the first ones we can see is Miriam, who uh, was a prophetess. Um, and yeah, she was a prophet. Uh, Mo- uh, well, Aaron was a priest. Moses and Miriam were prophets. Um, and we have to ask ourselves, first and foremost, if you're a prophet, where do you get that power from? Um, M- Miriam was a prophet. Um, it says this again and again and again in um, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Um, then uh, we also have, uh, let's see, um, in the New Testament we have Anna, uh, she was, uh, in the book of Luke, she was uh, uh, a prophetess in the uh, temple, uh, and she was the one who basically came out uh, during, um, oh gosh, I don't even know what it's called in the Jewish tradition, um, I guess uh, christening or something like that, what, uh, and so, you know, she came out and prophesied over Jesus, um, you know, when he was a baby. Um, and, you know, during the Great Commission, um, you know, Jesus didn't say just for the men to go out and preach the good word. So this is specifically Paul, and he is say, and his wording says, I will not allow a woman to preach. Not God. I. And so, um, well, people can say, oh, but a scriptural is scriptural. And it's like, the books, the, the canon wasn't even canonized until 300 years later. Um, uh, First Timothy was almost left out of the canon. Um, this was voted out at a council. Um, and a lot of people seem to have this conception that God came down and grabbed someone by the hand and have them write the letters, you know, uh, verbatim. And no, that's not what it was. Um, uh, scripture is God inspired. Um, uh, God spoke through, um, mainly prophets. Um, well, unless you're sitting here talking about like first and second chronicles, first and second Kings, which is, you know, straight up history. Um, so, I mean, we need to realize what scripture is. And, uh, uh, but once again, the wording is very, very clear that Paul is saying that he does not allow women to preach. And he says it just to the church of Ephesus. Obviously, there is an issue going on in Ephesus that he needed to address. And um, I believe I should have looked up at the scripture, but in one of the books, um, he's talking about how the church was having issues with uh, uh, basically the women just gossiping and um, uh, causing stirring trouble in the church. Um, 
Right. And in several of the cities, uh, the women uh, preachers and stuff of the pagan religions were pretty much temple prostitutes. Um, and right. Paul did not want Christianity to be... Um, uh, but um, one of the things I really wanted to point out... Oh, where was it? Um, let's see. It is in... Uh, is this it? Uh, for, yeah, First Corinthians eleven uh, two through sixteen. Okay, so it says, uh, "I am so glad that you always keep me in your thoughts, and that you are following the teachings I passed on to you. But there is one thing I want you to know: the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. A man dishonors his head if he covers it while he's praying or prophesies, but a woman dishonors her head as she prays or prophesies without covering her head. Okay, but but then he goes on. Uh, he goes on to this, but um, he jumps down to verse eleven. It says, "But among the Lord's people, women are not independent of men, and men are not independent of women. For although the first woman came from man, every other man was born from a woman, and everything comes from God." Judge for yourselves. Is it right for a woman to pray to God in public? But if anyone wants to argue about this, I simply say that we have no other custom than this, and neither do God's other churches. Deep. So, Paul himself uh, pretty much disputed uh, uh, what he said in First Timothy. It is... Um, he he is pretty much say, saying that um, uh, he's saying judge for yourselves and if anyone wants to argue about it you know what this is just our customs and there's other churches who have different customs right so um, th this is kind of where I, I changed theologically on this um, and uh, but I think you know what gets me is, I mean, the words of Jesus. Um, in Luke 19, he says, I tell you, if they were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. Um, in Matthew 9, 37, he says to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I am to say, if a woman is called into ministry, let her preach. I don't have an issue with sure. this. Um, and if you do, I think as Beth Moore said, you don't have to listen to her. Sure. But I will say this. Um, the way that... Uh, uh, got the guy's name again. James... Uh, Ma Ma John, John MacArthur. John MacArthur. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confusing yeah. my... Uh, <laughs> okay. James, James MacArthur. Okay. The, the way that are you they went James, about it... Are you confused with James mm -hmm. McDonald? Uh, yeah, I think I am. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah two different two people. Different, two different yeah. people. Uh, and uh, the way... And first of all, the way it was presented to him was mean-spirited. And his there. response was mean-spirited. He's had a lot of... He says... If you heard, if you heard any of his, probably not. But some of the sermons of his and a lot of the sermons are, in a way, mean spirited. You know, he just he just brings up a name and then he just goes full blaze, guns blazing it on him. Yeah. I've heard a lot of them. So I didn't even know that until like a few years ago. Um, you know, I thought before a few years ago I thought he was a great preacher, but then. You know, had a falling out with someone, and um, he was a follower of John MacArthur. And then I looked into John MacArthur, and then, oh my gosh, he is just—I didn't know he was this vitriolic and you know mean spirited. I, I was shocked when I found out about that, and you know, yeah. So I, I said, you know what? Don't want nothing to do with him anymore. Yeah. Well, and there's many people um, I stopped following over the years. Um, but, uh, I mean, gosh, uh, there's plenty of, uh, you know, uh, women 
uh, pastors um, I listen to. Um, uh, Beth Moore is definitely one of them, and I mentioned Christine Kane and Joyce Meyer. Um, mm-hmm. Victoria Osteen. Um, if you ever watch the hour-long broadcast on Daystar of uh, Lakewood Church, you know, Joel Osteen's a great speaker, it, but Victoria... When it, what time is that? When's the hour? Uh, I believe it's on Tuesdays at 7 Central. Um, okay. I, I don't quote me on that, but um, uh, okay. the hour-long broadcast, um, every single week, uh, Victoria Osteen comes up and gives... Um, Oh gosh, uh, was it just complete? The word just completely slipped my mind. Um, uh, when, okay, in the Catholic Church, you have the little short, like five or ten minute speech before the main sermon. What's that called? Um, uh, eulogy? No, 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 not the eulogy. No. Um, it's not, and it's not liturgy. Um, it's um, God. Benedict. Benediction. Uh, no. uh, I'm thinking it starts with a D. Um, doxology. It's not doxology. No. It's on. It's on the tip of my tongue. But um, I- anyway, what it is is um, it's kind of like a little short ser- sermon, um, about five or ten minutes long. And Victoria Osteen is fantastic. Um, <laughs> Dodie Osteen, back when John Osteen was uh, still alive, she used to do this. Um, Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, let's see. Um, oh, at, at um, our church, we have uh, great woman pastors. Um, uh, uh, Mary Jo Pierce, uh, uh, man, if you ever hear that lady speak, there's there's no, not a doubt yeah. on my oh, yeah. mind that you know the spirit oh. is on her. Um, also, Belinda Lane, she's yes, really Lane good. Fisher. Yeah, she's uh, really good. I mean, Belinda, Belinda Lane, uh, Todd Belinda's Lane's wife. good. Um, Debbie, Mo- yeah. Debbie Morris. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, if if you limit uh, the preaching just to men, um, first of all, uh, uh, you know the laborers are already few. You're you're cutting the workforce even more. Um, sure. yeah. But uh, man, what what a way to. Um, Especially in today's uh, climate, what a way to distance the church from um, the people we're trying to reach. Um, yeah. I mean, could, could you think of anything more politically uh, incorrect in um, our current culture? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I agree with you. Totally. Um, yeah, this sounds politically incorrect. But, and you know what? This conversation, all the information you've been given, this is very eye-opening for me because, I, you know, when I first started going to Gateway, you know, I had a hard time with the whole, the women preachers and, you know, the it's a little, in a way the, the charismatic stuff. But as of as of years have gone past, you know, me go, being at Gateway, it's really made a lot – it's it's really – the blinds have came off as far as I'm concerned, you know, with, you know, with how Christianity is supposed to be. And I really look at it now as, you know, hey, you know what – the old ways I was in – don't make sense anymore. Unfortunately, God loved the people that I was in with, on the church I was with beforehand, but God loved them. But, you know, just where I'm in now with the gateway and, you know, the women preachers and everything, it just makes more sense to me now. And I know a lot of churches, and I think uh, Gateway and Hillsong both do this. Uh, and I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, but it seems to be a good compromise is they come out and say, Okay, we're going to say that the senior pastor is going to be male, but women could serve in any other role in the church. And I'm yeah, fine with that. Um, I'm fine. Please. But quite frankly, I'm at the point now where I don't care if a woman is uh, the head pastor of a church. Um, mm-hmm. But you know what? I get where those who are saying it should be men only are coming from. Um, I believe, though, that people who are tossing that around do not understand their Bible, their theology, their history. I think the people that toss that around just look at that one that one area, and it's it's from God, and that's it. Yeah. You know, I mean, they don't. I don't think they do enough theology and enough hermeneutics to you know look into that and see where that verse is coming from. I mean, you, like I said earlier, that verse is coming from yeah. Paul directly, not not from God. I mean, they can probably say it. Maybe it was inspired by God, but I mean. 
you got to look at the hermeneutics of it. Yeah, and yeah, if you don't look at the hermeneutics, you're going to sit here and say, "Oh, there's so many contradictions in the Bible." I mean, it's like, well, why is it that um, if uh, my brother's wife dies without having a son, I don't sit here and take her in as a wife and give her a kid? Um, it's, yeah. Or why why don't I sit here and have you know 700 wives like Solomon did? Or um, um, yeah. and you know what was it, a thousand concubines and. Um, uh, yeah. It's like, or, you know, if I just want to sit here and pull out Jesus wept, I could sit here and say that, you know, he's a whiny crybaby. It's like, you got to look at stuff in its context. You got to look at the hermeneutics of it. Um, uh, and it's like, you've got to read your Bible. You can't just go sitting here pulling a verse out. Um, and I think we've discussed before that, you know, um, about the uh, ideas of alcohol. If we go back to First Timothy, Paul says, drink some wine for your stomach. <laughs> I mean, right. and the reason is, is because, you know, you're drinking water at that time, had bacteria in it. The alcohol is going to kill off the, uh, the bacteria, you know. That, and so you can't say that he's saying, oh, non-alcoholic. If he's saying drink it for your stomach, it's alcoholic wine. Um, right. But, you know, I could just sit here and say, well, here in Habakkuk, you know, you know, random book, uh, here in Habakkuk, he says that you shouldn't drink. Um, well, no, he, God was saying that to this one specific person who was about to go deliver a message. Right. Gotcha. So, um, but you got to look at stuff in her meetings. And, you know what? Uh, going going into alcohol, that's a whole nother show. I don't want to get into that tonight. Um, I actually... Well, let's, yeah, let's save that for another... That's a great topic for a future yeah. show. That's, I would like to talk about that in a future episode. Yeah. No alcohol, there. Uh, homosexuality, um, um, all of that is topics for you know future um, episodes. But tonight we wanted to address this because it is in the media right now. And it's getting... Yeah a lot of response so um but uh, anyway uh glad to know that we got this thing kind of sort of working um <laughs> and i dig it i dig yeah, it i dig um, it so we now know that we can have people uh own uh uh skype in for you know future interviews and stuff but um let's wrap this up because we hit 32 minutes so uh yeah let's wrap this up Ed. So, okay. Um, oh, uh, hey, uh, if you guys want to see um, the article that uh, William Quinn wrote, um, it's at uh, modernfaithunlimited.com. Go in there, and the name of the article is Let Her Lead, Let Her Preach, Let Her Minister. Um, absolutely brilliant article. Um, yep. And, and for great response. Also, well, great response, by, also, by the way. I liked your, um, your footnote on that. It was. It was Good. Did that and then when you when you covered the uh, the ten, the first Timothy verse, that was yeah. great, man. Cause I didn't know that. Honestly, I didn't know that myself, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So yeah. So um, for for tonight. Um, oh, uh, hey guys, uh, coming up soon. Um, you will be seeing part two of the interview with Vitaly. Still working on part two with uh, Jolene. Um, um, I know now mm. when. Um, uh, you go into a place like Life Today and, uh, uh, you know, they have an interview with a guest that was like, oh, this is going to be airing in three to six months. I get it now. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. So... They have to do all, they have to do all the fine-tuning and editing yeah. and everything. I completely get it. Yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, unpolished episode tonight. This is what it looks like unedited. So, um... Yeah. Anyways, uh, so long. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take your time. God bless everyone.